We're recording. Hi, welcome to um, uh, the Helm Dev uh, weekly meeting uh, for May the 2nd, 2019. And our agenda is such. We'd start off with announcements, then we'll have discussions, stand-ups, and then we'll finish up with uh, um, we'll finish up with assignments. So to kick it off, let's start with announcements. And for this week, we have nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> let's move on from there, and we'll go to stand-ups. So I'll start with uh, Mr. Farina. Okay, turn my microphone on. Uh, okay, so I've been working on the Helm search functionality, uh, looking at how we're gonna go about that by pulling uh, search from the Helm hub in Helm v3, rather than looking at the stable repository because we need to pull that stuff out. Uh, in addition to that, I've been going through reviewing some PRs and stuff like that. And uh, because with Helm 3, we've also been talking about um, you know, it's a major release. Uh, Matt Butcher and I met yesterday and talked about both the VCS library and Sprig libraries, looking at maybe doing a major um, release for those. That would be API breaking because now is a time where that also fits in with the Helm flow. So we were looking at that as well. And so a bunch of Helm 3 stuff in addition to just lots of charts reviews and stuff. So that's me. Uh, with that, I'll pass it on to Dr. Butcher. Uh, yeah, so uh, Helm 3 stuff, um, my team's been putting out a series of Helm 3 blog posts on, I think on the open Microsoft blog, maybe, uh, to kind of give previews. All of that's based on the stuff that's been in the uh, community uh, spec and they're kind of explaining how it'll be fleshed out. Uh, so we're making our kind of first push to explain to people what, what they can expect out of Helm over the next uh, six months. Um, most of my team went out to DockerCon in San Francisco this week. Um, we had some presentations and stuff, so they're all getting together out there since they're all together face-to-face -face anyway, and they're off working on Helm 3 stuff today, uh, just trying to plow through some of the issues, so uh, I'm kind of excited about that, but seriously struggling from FOMO because I would have liked to be, <laughs> to be there as well, um, but, uh, but and have other obligations. Um, so, uh, for my part, yeah, so we talked a little bit, as Matt said, about Sprig and, and Semver and whether we can finally make some minor changes to APIs and break those, uh, and then release, what would that be, Sprig 3 and, and Semver 2, I think, would be the versions we'd release. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so we'd like to get those done. Um, and then as far as roadmap goes right now, uh, we're looking to get an Alpha 1 done by KubeCon. Uh, won't have all the features, but it'll have at least a pretty substantial set of features that we wanted to make sure people had access to early, notably like no tiller, <laughs> uh, but uh, several other issues are in there. So I, th I think one of the outcomes of the meeting today will be to assemble a list of what people on my team think that they can get done in time for that. Uh, so that, uh, as soon as they say that, anybody else who's got home three things they want to work on that they think can fit in in that time frame, we should kind of synchronize up and uh, and, and decide because KubeCon's what, two weeks away at this point? It's two weeks away, might be three weeks. Uh, so, so that's kind of it from my side. Pretty excited. Uh, Martin, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, just having a look, see, is there any other core maintainer on? No, so I'll, I'll just take it before I hand it over then. So yeah, I was the bug shepherd for this week, um, just running through some issues on that. A few interesting things came up. Uh, first of all, a big shout out to Martent, where he found an issue with the, um, the Go generated files from the, the Proto definitions were a little bit out of date. So I think Martin is, is working on that. So I'll hand over to him in a few minutes on that, um, if, if you'd like to say a few words on that. Um, also, two issues uh, came up around, strangely enough, in the V2 and the V3 uh, code bases around the, um, the scaffold charts. Uh, changes had gone in there and uh, it broke the installation of the scaffold charts. So what I might look is, and I might, I might reach out to people as well, is maybe looking at the automated tests to see what's wrong there. So you'd only have found these issues if you, if you did a build and, and did a run and tried to do an install. So the fixes are in for them now. Um, but the more I think about this, maybe we need to have a look at the automated tests and see 
what needs to be updated on that so it'll get found in future. Um, apart from that, it was just uh, some of my PRs went in and I did some reviews and I've about, I think about three PRs to go in for uh, a V3. One is, I think finally we'll, we'll be on the live chart, Scott. Uh, so thanks to, um, to Adam and to um, Matt Fisher. They paired together and did a review and they found actually a nicer way to insert in into the code than I'd done. So I've made that changes. So uh, hopefully we get that in maybe by the end of the week. And then the other two are two small ones. Um, so yeah, get them in. So that's apart from me. So um, now I'd like to hand over to anyone from the community. Uh, would they like to say a word? And is there anybody on here who's worked at all on the database, the relational database backend? Oh yeah. That was one I've, I've looked at, I've reviewed that code a couple times and I wanted to just see, get opinions about how that was looking. And I think Matt Fisher needs to do his final review, but I think we can get that merged in. Yeah, I think there was a, a comment back today on it, um, uh, Matt, if you want to have a look uh, on it. So I think in, in, uh, okay. uh, one of the people came back on it. So Good. Yeah, yeah, so uh, anyone from the community that'd like to say something? I can just mention quickly about the uh, the proto files. So, yeah, they're out of date. I'm I'm working on trying to update them and figure out a workaround for the the test failures that uh, the updated files cause. I think we can just remove the deep equals and do a more sort of precise equality test, and I think that should fix it. Um, I'm I'm working on it now. Yeah, Good. thanks for thanks for finding that and for suggesting the fix. I uh, I'm probably the one who introduced that bug when I updated some of the generator stuff a month ago. I probably didn't realize that I had failed to check in that. But I, I like your fix of just making the tests a little more than the deep equals, which is usually a quick and dirty way of, <laughs> of testing things when you should do more precise testing. So thanks for that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Martin, as well on that for raising it. Uh, anyone else that would like to um, to say something? Okay, uh, so we'll move along on to discussion. So there's two items for this, three items for discussion, and they're uh, they're from me. So I have uh, I'll just I'll just go ahead and it. So the first one is issue five six six four, and this is with regard to when you do an output with template when you want to output the template into a particular directory by default it uses the chart name so um, the user that raised this would like to have the release name instead um, I suppose my only question on this is is does this break uh, backwards compatibility and if should we go ahead with it so yeah what, what was the issue on that one again uh, sorry, the number is 5664. So it looks like that Helm template, when you give it an output directory, um, outputs it and it uses the chart name as the base of the directory. Sure. And they're asking for it to be the release name instead of the chart name. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. And yeah. yeah, so that's going to raise other problems, right? So like if I went into that directory and I ran Helm pack, well, I guess that's just output of template. That's true. So it shouldn't matter with packaging. Would it be release API breaking? Well, it breaks backwards compatibility if, if somebody has written their tools around, <laughs> around that. Um, and, and a bunch of people have. So like somebody knows that the output directory is going to be that directory when you give it to them. And then afterwards, they might run an RM-RF on it after they've done something with the generated output. And now they upgrade Helm, it's generating a lo new location. Their RM-RF is going to silently not work, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And if they keep doing different release names each time, now you can start to fill up the file system, right? I don't know. I'm just thinking off the cuff of things that could be a problem. Uh, if they have written other scripting around this. Yeah, I'm aware of scripting that would break with this change, but uh, I mean, adding an additional flag is would be safe. So if we add a flag that says use release name or something like that, that would be fine. 
You just can't switch the default behavior on this one. Yeah. Okay. I'll um, I'll go back to the user about that. Uh, thanks for the feedback on that. So the next one is five six five zero. Got it. That's a PR, I think, right? Yeah, that's so sorry. That's a, a PR. Yeah, my, my apologies. So here it's, uh, I suppose, what is our practice here around um, this user has put in a nice PR and written documentation around configuring SSL using Terraform. Um, do, is this something we put into core or is this something maybe that, um, that would be outside of core basically? Uh, I think I'd be okay with in including this in. It's going to be harder to maintain, but it's good documentation. And it's in a separate file, right? I don't know. Is Terraform enough of a common use case that we would want to have this in the core docs? I might be somewhat biased in my workflow to be able to answer that. We'd be, have to be willing to probably open it up to others as well if they wanted to do Ansible or something else to do it. Yeah. Are you, Which I'm actually okay with, quite frankly. I suppose the other aspect of then is verification. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, this is not, I suppose, this is a bit of an extra documentation um, PR in the sense that uh, if you're going to review it, you'd have to be able to take it and verify um, yeah. that it works. Yeah, and we're going to have uh, people having trouble reviewing this. I think, what is it, AWS, when they have a third party thing that integrates with them, they typically link off to somebody else who hosts it. So they're now the authority on it to be bugged if it's inaccurate. Usually if it's Terraform, you know, it's going to be the Terraform project or if it's Ansible, it'll be back to Ansible. Is that the kind of thing that would be better here? And we could just have an external link to their stuff on it. Does this exist elsewhere? I mean, that's a, that's a good idea. Let me just quickly scan. I, I actually don't think we do have any other doc. Well, we have random docs about things like etcd configuration, but those are all largely oriented around Kubernetes issues. I don't think we have any that are truly external from Kubernetes. Yeah. But we might have... We do have the related documentation that points elsewhere to lots and lots of different external places. So we at least have a precedent for pointing people toward external information sources. Cause I think in there we have, uh, well, let's see. Yeah. We have video, audio podcasts. We have articles, blogs, how to's and extra documentation. So maybe we should, I think Martin is right on this. I think we should say you can link to it from the SSL doc and from the related page, but it's because it's outside of, the scope and expertise of the Helm core team, maybe that's better. Okay, I'll, I'll put a comment in for that then. Um, it is good okay. documentation now. It is really good documentation, but I suppose it's like everything, you know, unless you can verify it and keep it, keep it, keep it maintained, then, you know, it's kind of like blogs sometimes, it may go to date, you know, that kind of way. Okay, that's great, thank you. And the last issue is something I raised as well, is around, Okay, so we did discussion maybe about a month or two ago, and why I bring it up is it's, I've talked to some people in Istio, and it was one of their, one of their challenges with Helm was around CRDs. Um, so, and we, we discussed at the time that, yes, it's, it's, it's okay to create a CRD from Helm, but it's the manageability afterwards and updates, deletes, et cetera, where the CRD is out of, um, I suppose, is out of the scope of Helm. So, I, I suppose looking towards V3 especially, uh, with Helm 3 even, going out the door, is this something we need to tackle now? Uh, do we need to put a statement on our own CRDs or where do we stand on CRDs? Because there are issues out there and there seems to be a lot of questions coming in around CRDs and uh, 
personally, I find it hard to answer a question around CRDs. Um, so I, I, I've got a couple of thoughts on this. Um, the first is CRDs are hard. Uh, let me start with this. So, so you've got, you're using it as, say you're using the operator pattern, right? And you've got a shared cluster and you've got two people who install the operator, right? Now let's say you want to go, somebody goes and installs a third one, right? Uh, you've got the problem. Well, are they using the same version of the operator? Do they have the up-to-date CRD? If, cause there are people out there who are actually changing the content of a CRD at a specific version right? So they're altering the content. How does that impact others? Maybe they go to an older version that breaks the other controllers in there because, you know, you're supposed to use a CRD and if you're going to change it, increment the version. But a lot of people aren't doing that. Um, and that creates potential problems when you get into these situations. Or maybe you go delete it, right? Well, that's going to delete all the CRs. So if one of those three deletes it, well, that just now deleted all the, the custom resources that were created for all of the others as well. Right. And so we have to say, how do we handle it in situations that could be you just installed once, which is what a lot of people do with testing or when they're developing it. But when you get some of these stuff into these wild situations, you know, in, in the wild, in the real world, you've got a lot of variations on things. And we don't want to do something that accidentally blows up somebody's production. Right. And so CRDs is one of those things we have to be incredibly um, conscious with, I, I always think about it like a database schema, right? I've now created a table and it's almost like somebody, you know, you're saying I'm going to delete rows in it, my rows in it. Oh, but I'm also going to delete the schema for that whole, you know, table and everybody else's content gets deleted too. You, you're dealing with that kind of power. And it's one of those things where we don't have good patterns around. At one point I brought it up to several Kubernetes folks and they're like, man, should we do namespace? But that's hard. Really what you should do is set up your own API server inside of a namespace and then have your own CRDs into it. But that's not maintainable. And we went round and round and round on these patterns and everything was incredibly complicated to be able to handle some of these cases that may be in the 20%, but they're real world things, right? And so what kinds of things can we do that are pragmatic but won't cause people to, to accidentally shoot themselves in the foot, right? Or cause production issues because we don't like experimentation here. We like dealing with real world production and real world people using this stuff. And so at least one of the things that I've come to is, uh, is there a way where we can um, detect if the CRD is not there and not install it if it's already there, right? And so that's the first thing. It's, it's an install once task. Uh, the very first thing we're looking at doing, in fact, I talked to Adam about it this week, I just remembered, was how could we detect not if an API group was present, uh, because if you use capabilities that API versions that has, you only get an API group in a chart, but actually to see if the resource was there at an API version, right? Because right now I can say, you know, great, apps v1 is there, but I can't say apps v1 deployment, or I can't do anything like that with a CRD. I can only see that the group is there. Could we actually detect the resources present at an API version? And we talked about ways of backwards, uh, backwards compatible ways of populating that information. Uh, and so I've got a to-do to go off and do that for Helm v2, and then probably try to bake that into Helm v3 as well. Uh, so it can be API compliant and everything. Uh, so that's an easy way to give chart authors that ability. A while ago, I looked at trying to say, is there a way to detect if the CRD is installed and if it's changed already. So the CRD install hook can kind of detect these things. We can probably as part of that detect if it's there. Detecting if it's changed is super hard because lots of other things throw properties and fields on there. And so you can't always tell what's new and what's different, right? As soon as you put something into a cluster, next thing you know, it's all of a sudden decorated with all this other information that you didn't have when you generated it. And stuff's gonna be different ordered and it becomes a very hard problem to say, well, you know, even the one you just pushed in, is it exactly the same document I have on disk unless you then read it out and stick it onto disk? right? This is a very, very hard problem with Kubernetes. So seeing to try to do this to make sure every time I do, it's going to be idempotent. It's not going to change. That, this is a hard problem. Um, and so that's why we went back to, can we just detect it's there at a version and then provide some messaging around that? Those are the kinds of things that we're talking about doing, if that helps. I, I'm open to totally other things. I'd love to have long conversations on it, but it turns out that this is a hard problem when it turns practical and not theoretical running it in the real world. And I totally understand Istio's problem. They're not the only ones experiencing this. The reason I'm attacking it is we use CRDs and controllers where I'm at and we run into this. And the charts repository runs into this as well.
I, mean, I think I think one of the concerns that I have is that this is one of those areas where if we're not careful, we end up with the community doing a bunch of things we then sort of have to support because we can't break them all. <laughs> Even though we say, well, we didn't actually say you shouldn't do that. You know, we, we just let people go out and do stuff. Um, and, and that's dangerous, I think, because we get ourselves, we then have to support that because, you know, whether we, whether we told them they could do that or not, but they did it and they could do that, we're kind of stuffed then. So, and I agree, it's a really hard problem. So is, I think it's, can we provide some clarity about, here's stuff that we think is safe to do and we will support that going forward. And there's kind of Wild West stuff, which you're on your own, you know, we don't recommend that. Um, I don't know whether, whether, irrespective of what those things are in those buckets, but right now I, I, we know people are doing crazy things and, you know, who knows whether we'll break them or not in the future. <laughs> Yeah, and, and this gets, I, I think, continually hard for maybe two reasons. Uh, one is a lot of people are doing things that the API folks at Kubernetes say you shouldn't do. So if I get on, I've gotten on the call with them when I want to just chat it about this stuff, and they say, this is what you should do, this is terrible. One of the jokes we use is storing your application data in CRDs, in CRs, based on CRDs, is like storing your your desktop apps data in the Windows registry, right? Lots of people are doing it. Would you ever write a Microsoft desktop application and use that as your data store? Not a smart idea, but a lot of people are doing this right now, right? Um, and there isn't clear guidance out of the Kubernetes project on all of these things. And so people are going beyond what you probably realistically should do. And, and some of this is also because CRDs are in beta. So I know for volume snapshots, they tried to, uh, they tried to use CRDs and controllers to implement them in core and they couldn't get it to work. They, they ran into problems. So now they're going back to core resources. There's a document and a group that's working on how do we make it possible to do more because there's all of these problems we're running into with it. So we know it's still not completely mature yet and it's got all these problems. So for Helm to take something in beta and say, we're gonna go support something, right? That is still maturing. is kind of a, a hard slope for us. And so we've gotta be careful with that. Uh, my suggestion is in addition to the stuff that I talked about before, we probably write up a document document in our docs on it and get very to the point on here's where we're at here's why we're at this place we list out ways where if you do something you'll hurt yourself because I actually had to do the whole you delete the CRD and it deletes even other CRs like I've caught two places in the last 24 hours where somebody didn't realize that that would happen like it just hadn't occurred to them right and so some of this stuff it would probably be useful for a lot of people if we explicitly spelled out so my suggestion is we also create a document that talks about that and we put it in our docs and we share it with people. Does that work as a good next step? I, I, I like that because okay. it, it's like everything on, in, in, in a product or tool. It's, you can't expect everything to be done, but I think it helps a lot of people when they know what the restrictions are or what the limitations are. And I think at the moment, that's the hard part when the issues come up and it's always nice when you can actually reference doc and someone goes, well, why would you do that? And you could say, well, there's a reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if nothing else, having all of this documented will give people better guidance in what kinds of things they, when they make suggestions, cause there are good ideas that come out, but a lot of the good ideas we have to say no to because of weird edge cases and CRDs like, well, you know, we could just simply make de deleting the CRD definition, you know, part of the hook system. Well, yeah, except that we don't want to automate anything that would delete other people's data. So if we can articulate all of that, that might get people to think and come up with solutions that we haven't thought of yet, which would be excellent. Uh, yeah, and I, I suggest the first line should be a quote from Matt Farina, CRDs <laughs> are hard. <laughs> And I'm, I'm totally with him on that one. <laughs> or, no, or, or cities are hard, so sue me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone else on the comment on the CRDs? Okay, let's go to assignments. Uh, who would like to be the moderator next week? I think I can moderate next week. Thank you, Matt. Uh, who would like to be uh, to do notes next week? I can do it. You're gonna do it. Oh. Okay. Sorry, you want to go in there, man? No, no, no. It's totally awesome if you want to do it. <laughs> I go. I go with notes next week. Um, and finally, who would like to be the bug sharper or the issue sharper? I'll take it on. 
That's why we're all racing to fill the other roles. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the way he kind of, uh, he did a bit of a stall and then he goes, okay, look. Do you know what I, mean? I, I knew when you took notes, I'd be doing a yeah. show. You've right. been had Matt, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've done it. I, it's, I'm due. I'm due. I've put it off. I have punted it off onto other people for so long. I'm due. Well, I have to say thank you to Matt Farina the other day because I, do you know, do you know when you have issues on on two dip, two different VMs with two different code bases, you begin to think it has to be you. Okay, so I I brought him over to him and made make a product as well, and I just said, look, have you these problems? And when he said I have those problems, I went hallelujah. So, Good. <laughs> I just went, uh, I am not stupid. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I've got lots of problems, and a lot of them are my own making. Well, normally they're my own making too, but it, it, you know, it doesn't work on my, my on my machine. So let's hope it doesn't work on someone else's. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think that's all for this week. Uh, anyone wants to add any anything before we go? No. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, we'll have proper English speaker next week. All right. <laughs> At what point did an American become a proper English speaker? <laughs> Has to be better than an Irish person speaking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll see you all next week. All right, okay, folks, take care. Bye.